it's clear in New Mexico that a lot of abandoned and neglected dogs need help. So when nonprofit New Mexico Pets Alive wanted to lease a building on Adams near Lomas in Washington, landlords Brian and Sharon Arndt were on board. We thought it would work for them. It sounded like she had great plans, you know, for a pet rescue. We're all for that. She's referring to Melissa Roberts, executive director of New Mexico Pets Alive, or NMPA. This side of the building um, is the cafe side. Roberts was on KRQE's morning show in 2016, promoting plans for a first-of-its-kind canine cafe in Albuquerque. According to its website, it's a concept combining a dog cafe, adoption center, retail operation, and an economic development initiative. They grab their beverage, um, they go through a catch pen area, and then all throughout this entire space is where all the dogs will be. But whatever happened to those plans, we found the building on Adams Street sits empty, and the landlords are now in a court battle with NMPA. I mean, I'm an animal lover, you know, and I thought, okay, I've never dealt with a nonprofit before. I thought she had good intentions but I never saw anything come to fruit. In 2016, Roberts signed a three-year lease with the Arns for NMPA to move into the building on Adams. Landlords claim they even gave the nonprofit a deal, the first month rent-free plus a reduced rate for three more months. NMPA continued an online campaign asking for donations and promoting the Canine Cafe. When did the mm -hmm. red flags start coming? First of February, because that's when the rent was due and it didn't come. Art says an employee named Amy told her NMPA was having trouble with a grant and they'd send a check soon. Sometime in March, she came and emailed me back and she said, well, we've just decided that we're not going to be able to do this. In a letter to Arndt's attorneys, Roberts blamed the city for not allowing the housing of animals without NMPA installing a radiant heat floor and sprinkler system, which it couldn't afford. But the city and fire marshal's office couldn't provide us any record that was the case. Sometime in March or April, that envelope was stuffed into our mailbox out front. It has the keys to the building in it. The Arnts filed a breach of contract in court, trying to recoup past due rent, late fees, unpaid water bills, and the balance of the three-year lease, altogether totaling more than $140,000. I feel cheated. You know, they didn't do anything they said they were going to do as far as I'm concerned. About a year ago, right around the time the NMPA left the Adams location, the nonprofit received a business permit from the city of Albuquerque to operate at this strip mall on Manal. We spotted Canine Cafe and donation signs there in November, and what appeared to be donated items inside. But once again, the building sits empty. Last July, NMPA signed another lease for a building on Edith near Osuna. Turns out those landlords took the nonprofit to court too, this time for breach of contract, failing to pay utilities, and costing the landlords $57,000 in repairs, renovations, and lost rent. In the case file, an angry email chain with Roberts threatening her own lawsuit and calling the landlord a basket case or scam artist. That case was dismissed and NMPA moved out of Edith without ever opening a canine cafe there. We called Melissa Roberts last month. Hi, you've reached New Mexico Pets Alive's message center. And again this month. Hi, this message is for Melissa Roberts. But no one ever picked up. Instead, we only received email responses from a volunteer named Amy, denying NMPA is doing anything wrong and accusing News 13 of, quote, trying to create some sort of conflict for ratings. The nonprofit claims the Canine Cafe was open from time to time at Adams and Manal, but never posted hours since it relied on volunteers. NMPA's director, Melissa Roberts, only agreed to meet us off camera and declined our repeated requests for an interview. She claims their resources are limited and NMPA still plans to move forward with yet another canine cafe location. Today, NMPA is still active on social media, collecting donations for its latest canine cafe renovation project. But the nonprofit refused to disclose to News 13 how much it has collected in donations over the past few years or reveal the new location. Try to find it online and you get a wordy explanation and no address. New Mexico Pets Alive is also advertising plans for cafes in New York City, San Diego and San Francisco. Plans they claim are still in the works. She's not done anything that I can see to help one single animal. 
In a now defunct local newspaper, NMPA asked for donations to help save 50 homeless dogs from Hurricane Harvey back in September. In a later post, the nonprofit blamed problems with a property owner foiling plans to do so. Instead, it advertised an expanded canine cafe with a rescue brew restaurant and yard bar project. Described online as a nonprofit project of New Mexico Pets Alive, bringing New Orleans cuisine and the best craft brews from across New Mexico. The public could purchase gift cards to the non existing facility, and pre sale purchases would fund construction. But today, that website doesn't exist. In our off camera meeting with Roberts, we asked her about the Rescue Brew Project. She claimed NMPA was only a named beneficiary and that a partner was running that operation. Roberts refused to tell us who the partner is, only saying the project is still in the works and the website is being upgraded. We checked, and rescuebrew.org is registered to Melissa Roberts. So where are all the donations for NMPA going? Roberts claims to be saving pets through home fostering and adoptions, but the only posted financial records are from 2014. Meanwhile, we've learned the Attorney General's office is now investigating a complaint against New Mexico Pets Alive, and the arts case is still pending in court. How does this whole situation make you feel? It makes me feel pretty crappy. The couple feels differently about blindly trusting nonprofits. It seemed legit. Yeah, it seemed very it did legit. At the time, but we don't feel that way now. I think she's a ripoff. Sorry. I wouldn't give her a penny. On special assignment, Gabrielle Burkhart, KRQE News 13.